sometimes a linear interpolation doesn't capture the shape of the original function or the original uh, data series very well, especially if it's pretty sparse uh, at where we're collecting data. So we can use higher order interpolations. Uh, we'll look at a cubic spline as another example today. Instead of just using two neighboring points to make the estimate, uh, higher order ones use uh, more surrounding points to make an estimate as to what a value is going to be. As we saw with the linear interpolation, it used those two neighboring points and connected them with a straight line, meaning all of these straight lines shared at the endpoints a common value, but not a common slope. When we look at a cubic spline fit, then these pieces we're fitting with are actually going to be curves, not straight lines, and the endpoints with each other are going to share their value, and they're going to share their slope. And then for higher order, they're going to share their second derivative, third derivative, etc. in these interpolations. As an example, look at, let's look at a function that we know how it behaves. We'll look at the sine function. But I want to sample it sparingly. I'm going to just sample it at eight points. Uh, and we saw this kind of similarly on the first homework. Right, and I can plot my sampled points. Right, so this was the sine function, but we see that we only sampled it eight times in a period. So we're not necessarily sure of what this function looks like based on only these sampled points. And let me tighten that up a bit. So if we want to estimate what's happening between these data points, we can use a linear interpolation, would be one method. So I can estimate what's happening much denser, so let's say a thousand points. So my estimate at y using a linear interpolation, I can use interp1, my original data, t and y, and I'm going to sample it at, call this te, at te. Right, so we see we sample it at now a thousand points, or we interpolate at a thousand points between zero and two pi, so we get a thousand different estimates inside ye1. So if I now add on to this my estimated points from the linear interpolation, and I'm going to say explicitly I'm using a linear interpolation for this one. Right, using that linear interpolation, again, it just connects neighboring points with straight lines. And we see that doesn't really look like the sine function. It's very jagged, which we would not expect it to be. But we can use a higher order interpolation instead. So I'm going to call this ye2. I'm going to use interp1 again. But now instead of using a linear, I'm going to put in spline. And this is going to use more of the surrounding data to make the estimate as to what the values are going to be. Well, let's see what happens if I plot this. I'll do this one in blue. So if we look at the blue line using that spline fit, we see that now it has curves in between and it better captures that original data that came from a sine function. Now in real life we might not necessarily know what the function was that this is coming from, but sometimes we do have an idea and then we would say, oh well clearly this spline fit is going to be a better, or this spline interpolation is going to be better than this linear interpolation where the values it's estimating you see are fairly far off from the values that the blue line is estimating. And if I put a legend, I have my raw data, I have my linear interpolation, and I have my spline interpolation. And there are higher order uh, interpolations available as well, but for really the purposes of this class, linear interpolation or a cubic spline is all we're going to be really concerned with.